Okay, section 3.1.5. The numbers are going up. It's good news. Nucleic acids. Okay, well, nucleic acids. A couple of uh, key terms that we need to know. Nucleotides. These are the monomers. One unit monomers that make up polynucleotides. Now, you might, might be uh, thinking, what are polynucleotides? Well, they are DNA and RNA. And we're going to look at these in a bit more detail. Okay, so again, we're going to have sort of three general columns here. We have DNA, RNA, and then one for polynucleotides. So let's look at the star of the show. DNA, the famous one there. RNA, and then oh, my handwriting is horrible. Polynucleotides. Okay, they... The, the two monomers all have the same basic structure. So we have a phosphate group, and that bonds on to a pentose sugar. So pentose just means it's a sugar, a carbohydrate, with five carbon atoms. And that then bonds on to a nitrogen-containing base. So let's label these. This is right, uh, pento sugar. Ose tells us it's sugar. And this, the sugar in DNA is deoxyribose. These are all things that you need to know. This is a phosphate group. And this is a nitrogen containing base. Now this can be one of four things. That's why I haven't given it a direct name. It could be, it could be an A, something called an A, a T, a C or a G. Now these mean, this could, the A stands for adenine, the T stands for thymine, the C stands for cytosine, and the T stands for guanine. That's a U A N I N E, guanine. So what does DNA stand for? Well, I suppose that's definitely a key term. DNA stands for deoxyribo, we don't need the SE, deoxyribo nucleic acid. I might just underline our oh, deoxyribo nucleic acid. Now, what do we need to know about DNA? Well, a few things. First of all, it's double stranded. You've probably heard of the double helix, it's the shape that it takes. It's a long polymer, or we could obviously say polynucleotide. I made such a mess of spelling it up there that you can copy that down maybe a bit more neatly. It carries the genetic information, which happens to, which codes for proteins. Remember proteins, they're the doing molecules, they do shit. So the DNA holds the code, which is like the program, the recipe and how to make the proteins, and then the proteins get made and then the proteins go and do useful things around the body. It has a relatively simple structure. If you consider how much information it carries, relatively simple structure. And this meant that many scientists didn't believe it could be the genetic carrying molecule. They didn't think it could have enough data in it, which meant many scientists didn't believe, obviously they do now, it carried the genetic code. They thought it was too simple. And this was blown out of the water by Watson and Crick, who were scientists in the lab of molecular biochemistry, the LMB in Cambridge in 1952. And they, with the help of Rosalind Franklin, discovered or actually finally came across the structure of DNA. RNAs, the nucleotide is gonna look almost identical. The only difference is the sugar. It's also a pentose sugar, and it also is a nitrogen containing base. But the difference is the pentose sugar, let me write, is ribose. And there's one minor difference in our bases. We have bases adenine, cytosine, and guanine. There's one difference. In fact, am I going to put it in red to make it stand out? Yeah, I'll just do the letter. We don't have thymine. We have adenine. This is called uracil. So these are the bases in RNA. And what does RNA stand for? 
well, again, you can probably guess or you're going to know already, it's ribonucleic acid. That's where we get our RNA. What do we need to, need to know about it? Well, it's single-stranded, with very little exception. There are things called siRNAs, but don't worry about those. You don't need to know for now. Single-stranded, it's they're short polynucleotides, so they're not as long. What do they do? They transfer genetic code from the DNA in the nucleus to ribosomes in the cytoplasm, where they're translated into proteins. We're going to look at transcription and translation later in the course. I'm going to use, what, what is a ribosome? Well, we're going to look at also the organelles inside of a cell, but for this section of the course, you need to know a ribosome is formed from RNA and proteins. So they are proteins and they make proteins. So it's like a factory that makes a factory. They're different types, but they all contribute to the same, same family of molecules. And lastly, we've got the polynucleotides. Well, these guys are going to join together. Obviously, DNA is going to join with DNA, RNA is going to join with RNA. And so I'm going to draw our section of our polynucleotide. I'm going to stick with all one color. Oh, I should do four. If we've got four bases, I'll draw one for each. Now we've got our pentagons, our pentoses. In this case, they're all going up. I'm going to draw an arrow this way. This is going to become significant a bit later on. I'm going to draw my other side. I'm just going to draw this in black just to show that there's a little bit of a difference. And here, my pentagons are facing down. These are going to pair up, so I want these to be, my nitrogen-containing bases to be more or less at the same place. Oh, my upside-down pentagons are not as good as my regular pentagons, I'm afraid. All pretty horrible, but okay. And then obviously on this side, our pentagons are facing down, so that's slightly significant as well. So we're going to label some of these. I'm going to label in what color i can label this side and i'm going to label in black we call these two in fact these two opposite directions we call them anti-parallel so they're going in they're not both running in the same directions and between our bases here we form hydrogen bonds and the i've drawn two hydrogen bonds between these guys that means that these must be either A or T in DNA. These guys, they're always partners. They're specific to one another. A bonds with T. These guys have got three bonds, which means it's either C or G. Which one goes on which side? I'm not too bothered. But they must be opposite. You can't have two Gs together. You can't have two As together. Again, this one is going to be, uh, let's put T on this side, A on this side, and then we can do C on here. And G on here. Three bonds means it's C and G. Two bonds is A and T. What are we? What have we got going on here? Well, we've got this bond. This is a phosphate. It's actually called a phosphodiester. You'll remember ester bonds from fats and lipids. It's a phosphodiester. So it's a diester bond, two bonds, because you've got one on each side, and it's phospho because there's a phosphate in there. So this is when two nucleotides join by condensation. It's a phosphodiester bond. What else do we need to have here? Well, these are hydrogen bonds. Um, what else do you need to know? Sometimes we refer to the sugars and the phosphates alone and we call that the sugar phosphate backbone. So that's just the sugars and the phosphates ignoring everything else. If you were asked what a, one of these single bonds are, it's a single ester bond, but we don't really need to know that. So a little note I'm going to put at the bottom, I'm going to say A always pairs with T and C always pairs with G. And this is because these form two hydrogen bonds together and these guys form three hydrogen bonds together. And if I wanted to draw a little double helix, I suppose I can draw a little helix like that. And then we've got 
are hydrogen bonds forming the rungs of the ladder. And technically this is obviously a DNA double helix because RNA is single stranded. So the only time when you've got these two anti-parallel strands of DNA, it's always going to be DNA. And that's it for the nucleic acids.